Hi, I'm Christy Overton Johnson. I want to welcome you to our last episode in our series, Understanding God's Word. We have been taking the book of Philippians and using it as a study guide to teach us how to dive into God's Word. And I've been able over the last about eight or nine sessions together to share some of the things that have really helped me, but also we've been taking a fresh look at the book of Philippians and I hope that you've enjoyed it. And I hope that more than anything that you have realized that studying the Word of God is exciting. It's not boring. There's so much in here that is relevant to us. Everything in here, let me rephrase that, is relevant to us and it's applicable. And so if you come to the Word of God with an excited heart, with fresh eyes and you say, God, I've got ears to ear, ears to hear and eyes to see, then God will reveal fresh things to you. The Bible says it is the Holy Spirit that helps us to guide us into all truth. Do I think that I know everything? Absolutely not. And even as we've been going through this series, you've seen there's so many questions that I still have. But the great thing is every time you go to the Word of God and you ask God to reveal new things, He does. And if you have a heart that's teachable, every time you go there, He will show you something. And if you're willing to dive in deep and go study the original uh, meaning in the Greek or the Hebrew, depending on if you're in the New Testament or the Old Testament, you will find out so much more. If you study who the authors were, if you study the time period, remember we talked about you want to know who wrote it, why they wrote it, who they were writing to, what was going on in that time. You want to make sure you think take things into context. You don't want to just pull out a scripture and make a whole life message out of it if it's not in relation to everything around it. you got to make sure that the meaning is there, you understand what the, um, the Bible and the times we're talking about referring to, and then you apply it to your life. So I hope that you've learned a lot. We're going to finish up Philippians 4 today, and this is going to talk about a verse. We're going to talk about a verse that so many of you, I'm sure, have heard it. And so many of you, like me, may have taken this verse. It's been your life verse. And if you're like me, you might even take it out of context and thought, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And you just forge ahead and you do whatever it is you want to do, thinking God's going to bless it. And we're going to learn today that that's not the case. So I, if it's okay with you, I'd like to open this up in a word of prayer. I'm just really thankful that you're joining me today or tonight, whenever it is that you're watching, from wherever you are that you're watching. If you're watching from a jail cell um, or dorm room or some kind of activity room, I just want to say thank you for allowing me into your space. Thank you for being receptive to the Word of God. And my prayer for you is this will encourage you, equip you, and empower you to face um, everything that's coming today and tomorrow and in the years to come. And that goes for you too. If you're watching from YouTube and you're at your home and you're in a situation in your marriage and your, um, your workplace or with your family, whatever it is, we're all people. That's, that's the thing. God knew that wherever we are, we're still the same and that we're all people and we all need Jesus, and we all need His hope, and we need His help to be able to get through life both on the outside of prison walls and on the inside. And so I want this word today to be an encouragement to you, and I believe Philippians 4.13 will encourage you. And so let's go to, pray, go to God in prayer and ask Him to bless our time together, and we will see what the Holy Spirit has in store. So Father, I just want to thank you so much for this time to just stop and to look at your word. I thank you for this time to be with my friend that's on the other side of this video, God. Wherever they are, you see them, you know them, and you love them. And I just thank you, Lord, that your word that we're studying, that in this particular book of Philippians was authored by Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that these words are for us today. That this is a reminder that he's given believers that as we face the trials of life, Father, that you're with us and you're equipping us to be able to continue forward and to leave a mark for you to shine brightly in these dark places that we often have to pass through. 
So, Father, just bless our time together. Bless the reading of your word and give me fresh revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we have been already touched on Philippians 4, and part of this passage has meant so much to me. Philippians 4, 6 through 8, we talked about that last time. It's about overcoming anxiety, and we learned through Philippians 4, 6 through 8, the, the key to overcoming anxiety, and it's prayer. It's going to God. It's telling God what we need instead of worrying about what we need and being honest with him. He knows it anyway. And so that's what we studied last time. And, you know, Paul was someone who could have had a lot of reason to be worried, but he wasn't because he knew that God was with them. He knew who he was. He was a child of God. And so he was able to encourage other believers because he himself knew the faithfulness of God. And he's going to share with us in this passage today in Philippians 4, the secret to life. Do you want to know what the secret of life is where you're getting ready to? Paul is going to tell us. And this is, again, the secret to living a victorious life and having more of God. That's why these episodes are called More. More Mondays because that's when I film them. And that's when we show them on YouTube. But it's, we can have God, more of God, not just on Monday, but on every day of the week, every minute of every day. And so, Paul, we pick up here in verse 10. He says, how I praise, verse, chapter 4, verse 10, how I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Now, remember who, this is a letter that was written to believers in the town of Philippi. And these are believers. He's also writing to leaders in the church. And, and we're believers. Many of us are ministry leaders. We are overseers of things that God has given to us. And, um, and so Paul is writing to this particular group of people, but the things that he's writing apply to us today. And so, obviously, he's not thanking us here for uh, giving him anything. But, um, you know, I, I think about as we read the Word and we meditate on the words that God gave him to pen, that we are being a blessing to Paul right now, that his legacy continues. And as he's living in heaven, um, just to look down and know that we're still reading these words, still being impacted and that they're life for us. And the same secret to life for Paul is the same secret to life for us. He says, now that I, not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. So he's writing to these, these believers and he's saying, you know, thank you for caring about me. I know you've always cared about me, but you didn't have the opportunity to meet my needs and to, to show how much you cared. And he says, but that's okay because I'm content. I've learned how to be content in all situations, whether I have a lot or whether I have a little. And he's getting ready to teach us all how we can be content. I think that is one of the biggest things. If we can all get contentment, then well, we're content. <laughs> Isn't that profound? <laughs> you know, we're not striving. We're, Paul didn't have to worry about where his next meal was coming from because he was content in any situation knowing that God was going to meet his needs. He was content because he knew that God was going to work out all things for good for him. He knew he was content because his reliance weren't on people and what the authorities, the Roman authorities did, his trust was in God. So therefore, he was content. He says, so really, I was never in need. Now, this is a man that wrote much of the New Testament while in prison. He's saying, I, didn't, I wasn't in need. Because why? Because he had God. And he knew that my God shall supply all my needs. And we're getting ready to read that. So he says, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation. This is what I asked you a couple of minutes ago. So you ready to learn the secret to life, whether it is with a full stomach or empty with plenty or little. He's saying whether I was starving to death or whether I was full, 
whether I was locked up or whether I was free, whether I had my friends around me or whether I was completely alone. I have learned the secret to being content in all situations. Verse 13, Philippians 4, 13, For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Even so, you have done well to share with me in my present difficulty. So he's thanking them. The context of Philippians 4.13 is Paul thanking the believers for providing for his need. And as believers, we do provide for each other's need. God uses people to provide for one another. God uses these videos in some ways and our magazine, Victorious Living, and our correspondence outreach to minister hope to people, to provide friendships and relationships through correspondence, to give you applicable teaching, to equip you, to be able to go on in life. And here people were sending money and they were sending um, maybe resources or encouragement to him. We do that. God uses people to do that. But people aren't what make us content. It's God. And he says, I've learned the secret to life. And it's not people. It's not your provision. It's God's provision. He says, for I can do everything through Christ. The way I like to see this translation, it, he's like, I can, I can be incarcerated through Christ because he strengthens me. He gives me his strength, which never runs out. I can sit here in hunger and still be content because I am in Christ and Christ gives me his strength and Christ enables me to get through this. I can be content when I am facing the authorities or when people are rejecting me because God is giving me his strength, his comfort, his wisdom. For I can do everything through Christ. I can face every situation. I can endure. I can go through anything and everything through Christ. That's the secret. He's in Christ. He's going through those things through Christ. Christ is with them in the journey. Who gives me strength? Christ is is giving them strength. He's saying, even though you weren't with me, even though maybe you didn't send me money or you weren't there, Christ was with me. And I was going through those situations with him. COVID, great example. I can go through COVID. I can do all things. I can face COVID. Why? Because I am going through COVID with Jesus. And his strength helps me endure. His strength keeps me going. His wisdom gives me the ability to think of unique ways maybe to provide for my family or to be connected with people or to, to reach into um, your space and hopefully into your heart with the Word of God. We can go through all things, endure all things, face all things through Christ. Why? Because He's going to give you His strength. And His strength it's a powerful strength that never runs out. And I love, let me turn to Isaiah really quick. And so when you're reading the, the word, remember we talked about, this is Understanding God's Word series, so I want to do a little teaching here. When you're reading, and he says, I have learned the secret of living, that should cause a flag to go off in your head and saying, if Paul has found the secret to living, and we've already learned that he's gone through hardship. And I mean, this man was shipwrecked. He was beaten. He was incarcerated falsely. He was incarcerated. Why? Because he was a believer. And he's learned the secret to life. That should cause us to stop and say, okay, I want to know the secret to living. I want to know the secret. This man found contentment in some terrible situations, even when people couldn't get to him and provide for him. So what is the secret? And he just says it. It's, I can do everything through Christ. It's through Christ. So then that would make me ask, how do I go through things with Christ? I can face all things through Christ. I, how does that work for me? And just stop and think about it. How can I go through this incarceration journey with Christ? 
I can pray. I can commune with Him. I can read His Word. I can share other Him with other people. I can fellowship with other believers. That's how you get through those situations. It's with Him. It's telling Him. He says, I have found the secret. I t- instead of growing anxious about those things, remember Philippians 4, 6 through 8, Paul's saying, I don't grow anxious. I'm content because I've told God what I need. And I'm, I'm trusting that now that he knows what I need, which he knew anyway, he's going to provide for my needs. So I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to be worried. I can go through this thing through Christ because he's going to give me the strength and he's going to give me the provision. So then you can look up like strength, God's strength. If you don't have the internet, maybe you could do a word study with some of your friends, get maybe the chaplain library. Um, the, the prison library has a um, concordance of some sort. Maybe there's some digital resources. But what you can do is then look up God's strength. And so if you were to go over in Isaiah, Isaiah 40, it says, this is verse 28. Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. So that talks about his strength right now. So if you're going through a situation that is difficult and you're going through that situation with Jesus, you are connected to a power source, this dunamis power, this power that is explosive, the the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that strength is in you. The same power, the the creativity of God is in you. And he says the creator of all the earth, he never grows weak or weary. And if you're in him, that means that you're in his strength and there is no end to it. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak. This is again, Isaiah 40, 29. And strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion but those who trust and I don't know if it's been in this series or um, others but I have taught on this before that word trust in some translation says but those who hope are those that wait it's not like you're just waiting and waiting and waiting or I hope God shows up it's trusting it is leaning into God that word trust is an actual word that means you intertwine God into your life into your conversation into your decisions and as you intertwine yourself with him his strength becomes your strength his power your power his wisdom your wisdom you become one you're abiding in him and it all just starts to flow through you too. That's why the Bible says if you abide in Jesus and you are connected to him, you're rooted in his love, it says you will bear much fruit. But apart from him, you can do absolutely nothing. So if you were to study God's strength, you would have found, come across Isaiah 40. There's so many others in the word of God, but I love this one. He says, but those who trust, who intertwine their lives with God, will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. I don't know about you, but that sounds like someone who's not running around like a crazy person. They're someone that's content. They're in full of peace. And that peace and that joy that they have because of God is their strength. And Nehemiah talks about the joy of the Lord is your strength. And that's the secret that Paul has found. He says, I've learned the secret to life. I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ. That thing that you're facing right now, you think it's got you. You think it's too much for you. I just interviewed someone recently named Rodney Massey, and Rodney was incarcerated for 25 years, but when he faced the judge, under that murder charge. He, he was a believer at that point. He'd gotten saved. He'd asked Jesus to save him just months before in jail. And while he was waiting for his sentencing hearing, of course, he cried out to God and he stood before that judge and he got 50 years. But you know what he said? 
He was able to learn the secret of living there and be content in prison. To be content because it was God's strength and His mercy that enabled him to face every day behind bars. And he thought at that moment when the judge said 50 years that life was over. He says, I thought it was game over. But it wasn't game over. Because he decided to face that situation that could have been 50 years, ended up being 25 years with Jesus. That man is now out. He is getting ready. He, well, he's actually already going in. He is planting the first church plant in the state of Illinois behind prison bars in Statesville or Stateville. And um, it's just amazing. But at that moment, he thought those circumstances he was going into, life was over, game over, as he says. But he faced that situation with Christ. And he's not the only one I've interviewed and talked to. Every person I've talked to, whether they were going through incarceration or Miss Marine that I just finished her interview, asking her, like, what was it like? She's facing a heart transplant. 70 years old, you know, going to get a heart transplant or 69 at the time. And what was that like? What is it like to live a decade with health challenges? And she says, I can only face it and endure because of God's strength and his grace on my life. The only way that I can do this magazine and, and face every single day, balancing all the things that I have to balance as a mother of four children, three that, have, uh, that are legally ours and a fourth that has been putting our, put in our home for the last year and a half, is uh, and, and a nonprofit and another nonprofit that I founded, it's through Christ. To be able to come in here and to sit and open up the word and teach you is through Christ. The secret to living, the secret to having success in the world, the secret to enduring things in the world, the secret to wisdom, it's in Christ. And so I don't want to beat that <laughs> to death, but it's the secret. And I think if Paul's saying, I found the secret, then we need to look at the secret and we need to, um, and you know what? This is a secret we don't have to keep. You know, most secrets are like, it's a secret. Don't tell anybody. Paul is telling us so that we tell other people this secret. This is a secret that's not meant to be a secret. So who can you tell? What testimony do you have that says, you know what? I was able to face that situation. And I could be content right then. Why? Because I was facing it in Christ. And I was going through it with Christ. And He gave me His strength. Testify to that. And that will encourage someone else. So let's keep going. Um, it says in verse 15, and we're finishing up this chapter. As you know, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the good news and then traveled on from Macedonia. No other church did this. So he's thanking them for financial provision. Even when I was in Thessalonia, you sent help more than once. He's going, even when I was in this other region and the church in Thessalonia should have been maybe helping me, you were helping me. He was thanking them for their faithful love and provision. And I know that I have... Um, so many people that I just have want to thank because they come alongside this ministry and enable us to do what we're doing. And so remember that as you go through life to thank people for what they've done, to thank them for sowing into your life, for encouraging you. And it might be financial help, but it might be spiritual help. It might be friendship, it might be an officer who's been kind or something. Say thank you say thank you, just like Paul did. He says, um, I don't say this because I want a gift from you. You know, I just called someone <laughs> just before I came and sat down up here, and I was thanking Mr. Ed. And no, that's not the horse. His name is Mr. Ed, uh, and I'm not going to share his last name. But I, was, I said, hi, Mr. Ed, this is Christy, and I just wanted to check on you see how you're doing and this man has supported us and he had someone in mind he wanted us to interview for the magazine that he thought would be a great fit and at the end he goes hey give me the address and let me I want to send some money 
to support this ministry because I really believe in what you're doing. And I said this same thing to him. I said, well, that's not why I called you. He goes, well, I know it's not why you call me, but I want to help. And you know, just calling and thanking people, making sure they know how appreciative you are, lets people know that you are grateful, that you do appreciate it, lets them know the difference that they are making. And um, and oftentimes they'll come back and, and they will continue to sow into your life. So never forget to say thank you. And um, he says, I don't want to get a gift, but I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. And that is my prayer for you. All the letters we receive for you, thanking us for these programs, for the magazine, for the correspondence outreach, for the, the Bible connection with Rescued Not Arrested. Um, your letters that say thank you, um, we just can't thank you enough for those because they encourage us, they keep us going. And um, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness, for reaching out and encouraging us. And it says, at the moment, I have all I need and more. You know, Paul was in a good place. I am generously supplied with the gifts that you sent to me. They are a sweet smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. Have you ever thought about that when you sow into a ministry, when you sow into someone's life, whether that is with your time, whether that is with your resources, that you are performing an act of worship to God. You are giving to Him a sacrifice that is pleasing to Him. If you have supported our ministry, thank you. If you financially support it, I, I just want you to know how grateful I am. But it is a sweet smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. So not only am I thankful, but God is thankful and it pleases Him when we support one another. And the same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. There's that in Christ Jesus. So here's the thing. When you put your life in Christ Jesus through prayer, through communication with him, through communion with him, through doing life with him, surrounding yourself with believers, studying the word of God, praying, worshiping, trusting him leaning into him not your own understanding that is the secret to living and when we are in christ he supplies our needs so philippians 4 13 is a very powerful verse for you to memorize as you go through and say my god i can face this with you i can do all things through christ who gives me strength but also when you have needs you can say, you know what? This is um, 419. The same God who took care of Paul, the same God that meets the needs of victorious living, the same God that has helped me in the past will meet, will supply all my needs from his glorious riches. Do you know that God has glorious riches? He has a storehouse of everything that we need, and it is in great supply and yes it's in great demand but he does not have a shortage of supply not like a lot of the world today and not only that he can get it to us the minute we need it unlike today with covid i don't know how many um if you've been incarcerated and you haven't been out of course you know things have changed because they've changed for you but in the free world it's just been crazy and there'll be things that you'll see at a, at a Walmart or somewhere that there's the supply, but it can't get to us because it's, it's in a crate and they don't even have workers because so many people don't want to work that it can't get on the shelf and you can't buy it. Well, that's not God. And also in these COVID times, there's a shortage of materials. There's a shortage of workers to make things, to meet the demand of supplies. And so I want you to know that that's not God. God has an abundant storehouse of everything that you could ever need. And the minute you need them, he can disperse them to, it, to you. The minute you're ready for them, he can disperse them to you. 
There is no shortage of um, supply and there is no shortage of workers. He has angels that are messengers that can send you that answer. He has provision. He has people that he will drop it in their heart. Go by. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've heard this. Go by this place and wait. And you'll see, people hear this from the Lord and you'll see someone coming and go buy them a car. Go help them. Um, I, so many people call, hey, the Lord just put you on my heart today. And, and I want to give you X amount of dollars to help you. Um, meet the needs that you have this week and it's always the Lord taking care of it and that's why Paul is saying I don't have to worry about it I don't have to worry about where it's coming from because God knows and the same God that supplied Paul's needs while he was incarcerated is the same God that's going to supply your needs the same God that supplied Paul's needs when he was out in the free world going from church to church, um, sowing seeds of the gospel, is the same God that's with me. When I go into prisons and to churches and to different places, ministering the word and the good news of Jesus Christ, the same God that met Paul's needs is meeting my needs. And so never forget that. We have a God, it says in Ephesians 3.20, who goes above and beyond, above and beyond your expectations. He can do more than you can imagine. And so I just wanted to encourage you with this scripture. We are, um, he, Paul closes it out. And if you notice, Paul closes and opens many of his uh, letters in the same way. And he says, now all glory to God our Father forever and ever, amen. And so a lot of times he'll have, he'll have greetings. So if you go to the beginning of um, Philippians, it says in verse 2, chapter 1, May God, our Father and Lord Jesus Christ, give you grace and peace. Grace and peace. He'll say that in Colossians. He'll say that over and over. So I like to compare a lot of his writings and say, you know what? It's interesting. He said grace and peace to all these people. So therefore, that must be a very important thing that these people need. They need God's grace. They need his peace. Because those are the first things that Paul says to him. And once, I can't remember which book it is, he inserted mercy. <laughs> and, um, and then he closes them. Um, May all glory to God our Father um, be to our God our Father. He wants all the glory of his life to go to God. And then he has some final greetings. Give my greetings to each one of God's holy people, all who belong to Jesus Christ. The brothers who are with me send you their greetings. He's just passing on his hellos. Give so-and-so a, a, is what we would say. Hey, tell so-and-so, hey, give him a high five or a fist bump for us or a hug. You know, tell them that I love them and tell them thank you so much and encourage them for me. And all the brothers here, they say to say hello too. I'm sure you've done that if you've written a letter to somebody and you're writing on behalf of a group or, you know, I'll call to um, my husband this morning I was talking to his mom I said be sure and tell your mom I love her and so that's all he's doing here is he's just giving those greetings and he's finishing up his letter and he's just reminding them that hey we're, we're all thinking about you and then he closes it may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you with your spirit and I think that's a great place to stop um, Friend, God loves you. God is able to meet all your needs. He will supply your needs. There is no shortage. There is no lack. And the secret to going through life, the secret to overcoming, the secret to experiencing more, not just more stuff, but more of God, is abiding in Him, living in Him, and intertwining your life with Him and doing life together with the Holy Spirit with God our Father and Jesus Christ our Savior. So Father God, I just thank you so much for this time together. I thank you for your word that is alive. I thank you, God, that your word doesn't change. I thank you, God, that what you did for Paul, you do for me and you do for my friend that's on the other side of this camera. God, you do so much for us. 
things that you're orchestrating, you're working with your hands right now that we can't even see, we can't comprehend with our finite minds, God, but you already see the end. You already know where you're taking us. You already know the provision. And sometimes that provision comes from ravens like we see in the Bible in unique ways. Like you had birds feed your people, Father. And um, there will be ways that you provide for us that are very unique. And I think the way, the reason you do that, God, is so that we know without a doubt it was you. And so I ask God today that you meet my friend's needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. God, your glorious riches that are stored in heaven, that you would release them today, that you would meet our needs, the financial needs that Victorious Living has to go to press next week, the needs that my friend has for their health. Father, you'd release ministering angels to come to us, to give us the strength to bring the resources, that manna from heaven, to provide everything that we need. Lord, we believe that it's coming. And Father, as we wait on you, you will infuse us with your strength. Give us your creativity. Give us your wisdom. Father, we thank you that we don't have to be anxious over everything, but we can, anything, we can just tell you what we need. I thank you, Lord, as I go back through Philippians, Father, just with the word here, we've gone through every verse in here, Lord. And we thank you, God, that you've taught us much. You've taught us what really matters. And that's our relationship with you. And so, Father, I thank you for the example that you gave us through your son, Jesus, for his humility that we learned about in chapter two. May we have his attitude as we move forward. May we totally rely on you just like Jesus did. May we serve others like Jesus did. May we not be anxious over anything, just like Jesus wasn't anxious. God, he trusted you to direct his footsteps, and we trust you, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are alive and that you are the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me, and I hope that you've watched all of this uh, series of our Understanding God's Word series. We just finished up Philippians, and I look forward to joining you again on more Monday where we will start a new series being a champion for God. So I'm excited about this. We're gonna study the life of David and learn the character traits of David that made him a champion for God. And you're gonna be surprised to learn that it's not his skills, it's his heart. And you can have the heart of David, that heart of a champion, as can I, and we can be used by God to slay the giants of this world. So I look forward to that study with you. I just want to encourage you, um, if, if you're watching this on YouTube um, this week, I want to remind you that the deadline to sign up for Victorious Living for the fourth quarter edition of 2021, so this is dating this in prison and other places that you'll watch it, but if you want to get that magazine sent to you directly, then you'll need to go to victoriouslivingmagazine.com and you will need to subscribe to that. And when you subscribe, guess what? You are giving it to an incarcerated person who has requested our magazine. So we have thousands of inmates who want to get personal subscriptions and your subscriptions enables us to give one too. So I wanna thank you so much. Perhaps you've been wanting to think of ways that you can help um, you can become a mentor within our organization just through your partnership dollars. As you provide, let's say $50 a month, you're enabling us to mentor five inmates a month through correspondence. Maybe you could give $100 a month. What that does is it sends a case of 100 copies of Victorious Living into a prison every single month. And every month we are adding about five facilities every month. And we need the support to get those in there, not to mention the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of facilities that we're also going into. And maybe you're interested in publishing and you'd like to help support us go to print every quarter. So there's so many ways that you can partner with us. We're really excited about what God's doing. And um, one big thing you can do is pray for us daily, especially if you're incarcerated. Would you put us on your prayer list? Would you pray that God 
would open up doors, that he would protect the resources, that as they go in, that those magazines, this is one of my biggest prayers, that these videos will find their way to people on the tablets and that men and women in that magazine will intersect not just digitally, but also all the hard copies, the hundreds of thousands of hard copies of Victorious Living that have been shipped into prison facilities. We just pray that not one of them will fall to the ground without being absorbed, that the Word of God would come to life when people read it and they would come to know Jesus in a very personal way. If you have that magazine and you have not shared it with someone, please don't keep it to yourself go share it. Use that magazine. I should have one with me right now. I've got hundreds of them on the other side of this door. But take that and use it for a Bible study. We have devotions that you can use, and it's in Spanish and English. Use them. Form your own Bible study. You can play this video of all this Understanding God's Word series, and y'all can tackle Philippians again together. Use these for your tools. That's why we create them. We do the magazine, the devotion, the, the correspondence letters, these videos, so that you have tools, whether you are in prison or out of prison, to hold your own small groups, to hold your own Bible studies, to have your own witnessing tool. Our tools are your tools. We do them so that you have them and you can use them to spread the Word of God, to become equipped to share the good news of Jesus Christ. We love you. We thank you for watching. Please share this with a friend. Show them your tablet in prison or share it on your social media accounts if you're able to do that. Like the page, subscribe follow whatever applies to whatever platform that you're doing. Again, thank you so much and God bless you.